right, welcome back for another episode of Hidden Gems. This is the video series where I talk about those comics that are often overlooked, undervalued, underappreciated. Uh, these aren't wall books. These are things that you're going to find tucked away in boxes, like I said, forgotten about, and just interesting type fare. Some oddball things, some later printing, some variants, et cetera, and things just kind of catch my eye that I think uh, is interesting to talk about. Hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure that you like, subscribe, you hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. And if you want to see the selection of books I got for you this week, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and I will be right back. Alrighty, so let's get right into it and not waste any time. This week, we are going to start off with later prints. Uh, today, I think I got all second prints for you. Some interesting stuff, some independent stuff that, uh, again, I just think uh, is worth knowing about that you might not be aware of. Starting off with some uh, Ghost Machine stuff. So, the original Geiger run, which seems like it took place forever ago now, had a bunch of later printings throughout the run. And one in particular you might not want to overlook, and it's not an incentive like we covered on Chasing Goats. This is just a regular old second print for issue six, which does feature the first appearance of the character, Junkyard Joe, who does get spin spun off into his own series after this. So this is the first appearance uh, in the original issue six, but they spotlight him here on the second printing. You know my feelings about second prints already. I don't think a second print is still a first appearance. It's a reprint of their first appearance. But it's still an interesting book and a fun book to go and find as he is spotlighted there on the cover where he is not so much spotlighted. I think that might be his eyeball, but uh, we're not getting you know into specifics here of seeing the whole character. It's like, okay, you see part of him. So technically that is him on the cover, but is it really? Let's not get into that. Point being, good look at him here on the second print cover. And a lot of people like this book for one reason or another this thing could sell for 30 to 40 dollars you can see raw some recent sales over the last actually week or so all of those sales took place since april 4th so within the last week those three sales happened and there's more sales than that they're just the last three examples and if you see current listings people are seeking 40 45 up to 70 dollars for this second printing so once again this is one of those types of things you go digging in a back issue box. Maybe you stumble across this. Maybe it's just with the regular uh, back issues for Geiger. Maybe it's in a uh, old new release box where they're semi new new releases that are from the last year or two. They're just sitting there and they're like half off cover. I don't know. However, your shop discounts books. This is one of those things you might want to go digging for just to make sure that you didn't miss it before. So keep an eye out for this one now. With Invincible all wrapped up with its Season 2, as we await for Season 3, let's look at a couple of Invincible books while we're here, because Invincible does have some interesting second prints. We're going to start off, though, with the later run, because I believe we did some earlier run second prints before. Now we're going to look at later run stuff. So, Issue 100 basically looks like the same cover as the cover A. Cover A is, can you guess, can you guess? It's the little one. It's the little one there on the side with the yellow trade dress. The second print has blue trade dress. And you can see, if you look very closely underneath the one in the issue 100 and the 399 price, it does say second printing right here. But otherwise, the different color trade dress is the way to tip yourself off that you were looking at the second print as opposed to the first print. Because otherwise, you can see everything is matchy matchy uh, for, the, for the most part there. With that said, what does this one do? An issue uh, 100 second print? Well, a copy sold for like 17 bucks uh, way back in January. And that's the only sale that I could find in the last three months. Uh, great. And I could have missed something, but that's what I noticed. Available copies, 30 bucks raw. And somebody had a 9.8 listed for $100 at auction with no bids as of yet. So gives you a bit of a sense of where the market is on that book. Something you can still go and maybe find for a decent price in a back issue box. And, you know, maybe make a couple of bucks on it. That's the whole point of this series. I don't know what you might have at your shops. Every shop is different across the country, across the globe, even because I know we have viewers down in Australia. We got people across the pond over in the UK and Scotland, etc. You guys are going to have different stuff available to you than everybody else. But I'm just trying to provide some information on some books and some pricing. So in case you see it, you can make the call as to whether your shop has it underpriced or not. So. 
This is what the market is willing to pay. This is what the market is seeking. You find yourself when making that decision. If you find this in a shop for yourself, you find this in a back issue box for five bucks. It's probably an automatic buy. Ten bucks, you might hesitate. Like, do you really want to buy this for ten in the hopes to make seventeen or even fifteen? Maybe not. Do you want to pay twenty? I don't know. All these decisions are up to you to make for yourself. I'm just trying to give you some information and point out some cool looking comics. Much like another second print that is easy to miss because Invincible didn't do a lot on their second printings. You can see here, issue one has a very, very pale blue trade dress, while the second print has more of a sea green, if we want to call it that. So very slight and so very different here in that trade dress. It, granted, it does still say second printing underneath the price and underneath the issue number, but in case you missed that, the trade dress color is your tip-off that you were looking at uh, another printing. Not as expensive as the last book. This one can go for a bit cheaper. Uh, this copy sold for 12 bucks raw and a 9.8 sold back at the end of March for about 100 bucks. Asking prices, 15, 20, 25 dollars raw. So it's still something to be known, you know, that you should know in case you come across it for like cover price or less. You know, it, it still would probably be a good buy at that price because you never know. You never know where these uh, things might go as Invincible will come back around again once we start getting more and more seasons because I don't think they're stopping anytime soon. It's popular. It's solid. It's a good show. Uh, great talent attached to it. So I think it's going to continue on until they run its course. And we've got a ways to go before we get there. So. With that said, we're going to go from issue 101 and jump ahead a little bit to issue 111, which, once again, it's easy to confuse the two. I mean, really, dig in here and look. That is just a slightly paler yellow than the first print. The first print is the smaller book, and then in the middle, it's like a paler yellow. That's the difference. And then you can see second printing, once again, underneath the, the price here and the you know, with the trade dress and the number. But other than that, it's hard to tell the difference between the two. But prices are a little bit different, as for one reason or another, people like this second print uh, here and there, I will say. As you can see, copies have sold. Five bids got one to 15 bucks. Four bids, I don't know why these were auctioned, uh, for 10 bucks, and then a best offer on $20 for recent sales. So we're looking at what, like 10 to 20 bucks, probably around that $15 mark is what the market is paying, right? Asking prices, however, there are copies as cheap as $4.70 for a very fine. Granted, so it's not going to be near mint, but my comic shop tends to, at least in my past experience, granted, years ago, uh, they used to under undergrade books. Like, I remember they, they were selling me, like, a very good uh, Fantastic Four, number 49, and I got it graded, and it came back, like, a four and a half. So it seemed a little bit higher. It's closer to fine than it was to the good. But anyway. They're listing that one as very fine for $4.70. And other than that, you can see other people seeking about 20 bucks for the second printing. Just something to know and something to be aware of. Just like, here we go with another issue. Issue 127. Go ahead. Take a good look. It's like a Where's Waldo or a Highlights at the Dentist. Can you tell me the difference between these two? Well, if you look very, very closely... At the top border and the bottom border, there is a string of text. On the first print, it's like a tealish color, almost like the Hidden Gems background. And on the second print, it's more of a purplish kind of a grape-looking color. Very subtle, very different. Uh, not very different, I mean. Uh, and if you look at the bottom bottom text, instead of it saying, he asked, wait, he risked it all to get his life back, but blah, 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 blah. On the second print, Corey Walker is so popular, we sold out and we have done a second printing. So the text is different. Point being, very easy to overlook the second print here. And as far as pricing goes, well, second print could fetch you anywhere from 7 bucks to $10, $12. It's not that expensive. Uh, and matter of fact, it's pretty close to the first print as far as pricing goes. And you can see asking prices, nine, ten bucks. And then there are out outliers looking for more, like that $24 one there. But by and large, you can see you can get this thing for 10 bucks. So whether you find one out there and you want to go and spend any money on it, that's your call. But since we were doing all the Invincible second printings or I was looking into them all, I figured I'd just throw this one out there so you knew what it was and uh, what it looked like. And we got one more for you. It's outside of the regular series. This is Invincible Returns. A bold new area begins here. You can see bright yellow trade dress on that first printing. And then the second printing has that much paler blue. Once again, second printing right underneath the uh, cover price. 
But other than that, it's really that trade dress that tips you off, that you're looking at the second print. This one does all right. We've covered this book because it does have incentive variants, and uh, some of those are really tough and really expensive. But even the second print could be expensive, as you see copies selling for 14 20 40 bucks, And 40 bucks was the most recent sale at the end of March, where those other sales were in the middle of February. Asking prices, $25. $33, $36. So this is a decent find if you can find one at a decent price for that second print. Now, we're going to go on to our next section, and it is a segment that I used to do a whole separate show on, but I decided, you know what, we may not need a whole separate show. We'll mix them in here amongst regular hidden gems from now on, because I think that might be better, our time better spent, because uh, otherwise it can get a little old going through two covers and four covers and six etc. Maybe one day or two we'll do a special one, but for now, I'm going to go and just stick to doing it here as one of the segments on one of our Random Hidden Gems episodes. Now, this first series is not even done yet, and that is Duke. And I was very very well aware of the one in 10s telling the story. As you can see, here's Duke 1. Uh, it's basically kind of recapping what's going on inside the issue here, and if you get the rest of them, it basically runs through the whole series you know, as it goes on, and they all connect to form one larger image. So Duke 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which comes out in like a week or two. Now, this one I was aware of. I was not aware that Cobra Commander was doing the same thing. It just kind of snuck past me. I just wasn't paying attention. This, when you look at the individual covers, it's more obvious that you can see that it's kind of built to be like sections of a larger image, whereas... When Cobra Commander came out like a month later, like this cover here, this doesn't scream, this connects to something else, right? Like, so I wasn't paying attention to these. But the one in tens across the Cobra Commander series, which is also wrapping up later this month, I believe, maybe at the end of the month, also does the same thing. So it's recapping what's going on as you're introduced to the Cobra Commander and his weird trench coat and looking like the question wandering around uh, the American South before he runs into the swamp and the dreadnoughts and the uh, buzzsaw. And then you got Nemesis prime showing up. And then I don't know what happens in the last issue, but it looks like here we go as he's taking over uh, all of Cobra point being, I didn't know these all connected until now. So figured I'd share them all in all of these books. You notice I'm not giving you pricing on these because you can mostly find these one in tens for both of these series for ratio or less. So you can usually find these like eight bucks, 10 bucks, maybe 12, but they're not going to be much more, over or under ratio. So uh, if you wanted to collect them, it's probably something that's attainable uh, and shouldn't cost you too, too much, but it's not going to be free. Uh, so it's not like you're getting cover price here. You're still going to pay a little bit of a premium, but it's not like you're going to be searching for high ratio incentives or really uh, hot books. So it's attainable. It's something you can do uh, if you get lucky. And then you're patient if you want to. I like collecting these things personally, but I don't know if I'm going to go back and try to get all the one in tens because I was getting the one in 25s for both of these runs because I like the uh, card back, uh, you know, the action figure card back with the explosion. I can't do both. Like I got a budget still, so I can't get everything I want. But who knows? Maybe one day I'll get into this and try to get into it for cheap. Now, lastly, once again, I was blissfully unaware that they were doing this on the one in tens. And this was before Cobra Commander, before Duke. and. That's Transformers. I just wasn't aware they were doing this. We're, I don't know if everybody was. Everybody knew, and it was just me. But they just didn't scream connecting here on the 1 in 10 on issue 1. It's just a big Optimus head. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. Uh, and then as they went through the first six, issue, six issues, you will see they all come together here to form this huge image. But, yes, the color schemes are pretty close, but you see there's some big variations there, especially in the middle like where they're not as brightly yellows and oranges, they're more greens and blues. So I didn't notice that these all went together. But once again, first six issues, all one in tens of the Transformers series all go to connect into this much larger picture featuring a plethora of classic Transformers, Autobots and Decepticons alike. It's pretty cool. I like it. I just wasn't aware this was going on. I missed it. And now we got issue seven just came out. Uh, is coming out this week, so we're. Uh, I don't think they're starting a new one of these, uh, but I'll keep an eye on it to see if they are. But so far, it doesn't look look like they are. All right. With that said, let's get into some other variants. Now, I covered this variant set before over on Chasing Ghosts because uh, this is a series 
it wasn't immensely popular. Uh, it was different. It was unique, but they did do one in 25 variants that were comic book homages. And that's what I covered on chasing ghosts, as well as doing a big connecting cover set that were one in fifties, I believe. But on the lower end of things, they also did some movie poster homages. And the series I'm talking about is that green lantern and planet of the apes crossover. So here we go with issue one. The first issue happened to be a one in 15. So again, I generally try to shoot for like one in tens and one in fifteens, lower end ratios for this series, because otherwise we can save these for chasing ghosts. Because even at a one in fifteen, some of these are tough to find out there. It's just not a just wasn't a series that was heavily printed that was very very popular. So I just don't know how many of these are lingering out there, or how many people have bothered to list these for sale. It's not that they are not out there. It's not that they don't exist. But you look at places online, it's just not in the. It's just not in the news cycle. Like nobody cares at the moment. Yes, people are still talking about a Green Lantern series coming to HBO Max at some point, but how does that connect to Planet of the Apes apart from that? We know we're getting a new movie soon. That all said, issue one, one in 15, you see, awesome, pretty cool. You can see the matching of the poster there. No copy sold within the last three months that I could find, and there was one copy listed looking for over 40 bucks. So it's a decent return for a one in 15. Again, we're pricing at ratio. It's a one in 15 ratio, which means stores had to order 15 copies to be able to get one copy of this cover. So generally, a lot of people like to price at ratio. So a lot of people think the baseline for a one in 15 would be 15 bucks. Right or wrong, that's just generally how a lot of people think, including myself. Like I start there and weigh my options from there. Point being, shop had to order basically 16 copies to get this. They had to order 15 copies and then they could order one of these. So they had to order 16 copies. They paid two bucks a piece or whatever it might have been. So in theory, they still paid almost 40 bucks for it. But yet they still got the other 15 copies to sell. So we can't just say the one in 15 cost, you know, the full full weight of the cost because they got product with that. But however you want to look at it, that's just a quick rundown for those who are not aware of the ratio aspect of this. Because, again, this channel, I'm trying to cater to all different levels of collectors from beginners to seasoned vets. Comics book, comic books are for everybody. We don't need to gatekeep and uh, try to just keep knowledge from people. I don't believe in that. I believe in sharing information. This is a community after all. And, uh, you know, let's let people know about this stuff. I'm not going to keep this stuff secret because what good does it do me? I mean, I'm not a dealer. I'm not out there. It's not going to make me any money by just keeping things secret. So I like talking about comics. So that's what I'm going to do. With that said, let's keep rolling. Issue two. Another poster, this time it's Beneath the Planet of the Apes, and you can see a little different, but by and large, you see the text matching, the general outline and layout, pretty cool. Now they went down to one in tens, made these a little easier to qualify for, and yet a copy sold for 10 bucks with one bid back in February. Only copy available right now wants $150. Just saying. 150 bucks, that's a pretty tall uh, order there, Nordberg, but maybe they get it. Maybe they get it. Good luck to the seller because they don't have any competition. So you want it, you got to pay. There's there's one ticket out there right now. Let's get on to number three. Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I like how they use the Red Lantern here to kind of help frame it to match the original. And then you see all the characters all lined up. Once again, pretty well done. I love it when they think these things through. Uh, I'm also a fan of the artists that worked on these. This one in particular is E.M. Gist. There's also Tedesco. A lot of very popular artists worked on these covers, and you can see the quality is there. This is just some haphazard, loosey-goosey crap homage. It's like, oh, well, it looks like Spider-Man. It looks like ASM 300 because it's got the same pose, but the art looks like crap. This is well done. Beautiful artwork. Matches the poster. I'm, I like it. That said, new copy sold for this number three, but one's listed for 40 bucks. Once again, just giving you a sense of what's out there or not out there in this case. And uh, yeah, it's one copy if you want it. Unlike number four, Conquest. So here we go, Conquest. It's a little different as far as the color scheme goes, but otherwise, trade dress and text, it's all there. Once again, I think it's cool. I think it's fun. But who knows what people will pay for this one in 10 because none have sold recently and there's none listed right now. And then, as you noticed, as we've gone through this, the prices were pretty high to start. Then we get to a point where we don't even have any copies out there or selling. Now we get into uh, our next book. And this was a Mike Mayhew uh, who did this cover. Again, quality artists working on these 
variants because uh, I mean they're a popular series. I mean Green Lantern is a classic, Planet of the Apes classic. So probably wasn't hard to convince these artists to come and work on these things. Like I believe this one is Tedesco, and this is this is the final chapter battle battle for Planet of the Apes. But we know we're still getting another one. I still like this pretty cool, you know, especially when you mix in you know. I guess it's Grodd there in the middle. So the final chapter, but it's not really because we got one more issue coming. But this one in 10, it's not as expensive as the rest. Copy sold for only eight bucks. There's one listed looking for only $12. Who knows? Who knows? Again, like rarity alone doesn't equate to value all the time. There's got to be two parts to this, supply and demand. There's no demand. Doesn't matter how low the supply is. Nobody cares. Or until the point when somebody does care, and then the supply is tough, and then prices get high. It's a crazy market. It's a crazy hobby. Uh, but this happens from time to time. And then we got our last one. Issue six. Uh, I like this one as well. It's a pretty good one-for-one -one match from the whole, you know, color schemes, everything. You got uh, Sinestro there. Pretty cool. Even Hal Jordan, in it, the text matches the Charlton Heston name. I like those little attentions to detail. I think it's solid. Uh, but this one, nobody buying any of these recently, and the copies listed are 10 bucks, 13 bucks, and $125. So once again, all over the place here as far as what could be asked for and what people will pay. But those were the six issues that all, again, had one in 25s, I believe, that were all comic book homages which were pretty cool like green lantern comics and stuff uh and then there was a one in 50s that were a huge connecting image by i believe um asafara i think uh, was the artist not 100 percent, but i think that's what it was uh and they were pretty cool as well uh so go take a look at that stuff you know in addition to these but these lower end incentives may be a little easier to dig out of a box at a shop near you not to say it's gonna be easy i'm just saying easier than the others with that said, one last section, one last segment, one last category, which is ash cans. Now, the last couple months, we've gotten a few new ash cans delivered to shops, reminding us all of the days when comic shops used to get these all the time. They used to get these little teasers, these little preview copies, these smaller scale, couple of pages. Sometimes it looked like they were just printed on photocopy colored paper, uh, and that's all it was go back to the 90s when they were even numbered yeah they numbered some of these things but that said we're seeing a resurgence of these ash cans lately feral um had one um not too long ago uh space ghost etc we're seeing more of these come back so maybe we'll see the return of the ash can not that they really went anywhere but once again just kind of fell back into the mindset of collectors that kind of forgot about them uh but here we go going back to the 90s I always like this one because it's a Silver Surfer done by Jim Lee. It is actually a little wraparound cover. This thing was an ash can that cost 75 cents. It's a, it's a little, uh, little teaser book. This came out near when the uh, video game, like the Nintendo game for uh, Silver Surfer came out. And uh, this thing does all right. You can see here, uh, because there is a graded copy on that sold side. Look, copy sold 70 bucks raw or 20 bucks raw. It's a pretty wide gap. Then you look at a 9.8, so over $258 on five bids. And then when you look at the case, see the size of the book in relation to that case. So you can see how it's a much smaller book. It's an ash can, so it's not a full-size comic. It's a little shorter. And then you see the available copies, 20, 40 bucks raw, and then a 9.6 that's seeking 135. This is the popular one. I found this thing because they're smaller. When you're digging in boxes, sometimes you, you got to look down. Like they're sometimes in between books, just kind of fallen in between them or they're inside of other books even sometimes when you're flipping through and you're like what is this weird gap as i'm flipping and you're like oh there's an ash can in the middle of this copy of x-men for some reason just randomly just packed in there so these are things you got to dig i even found a gore shriek six and a half that way at uh storm watch comics which is like 15 minutes from me uh in one of their dollar sales and i got a gore shriek six and a half just buried in the bottom of a cheap box and uh, if you know what that book is, you know what I'm talking about. But these little books and little ash cans, they're fun little things you can find. Uh, there's a bunch of them. I think Chaos did a bunch of these, too, back in the 90s, along with Image, which is what we're going to get to after we first stop at Dark Horse. And Dark Horse gave us body bags. So Dark Horse gave us a body bags, ash can, little preview book. This thing, again, undersized. 
So Jason Pearson cover here, 20 bucks. And then, uh, what is that? A nine, eight looks like it's got sold for best offer 102 bucks. Raw copy 30 to 50. There's an eight, five looking for 125. And if you look in, you look at that eight, five, you see how it's smaller than the case. So it's an undersized book just to give you a sense of the size of it. It's like two thirds, the size of a comic, maybe three quarters, but more like two thirds. And then we get to the image books that I was mentioning before, because these things, I swear to God, it looks like they just photocopy them on color paper, like colored photo, you know, colored copy paper. And then you put a staple in it, sealed it with a little piece of tape, like a little, uh, uh, I forget what's the little guy's name on uh, Wildcats. Just drawing a blank on his name. But anyway, he was the dude on the sticker. We'll see one of those in a minute. But you can also see this is actually numbered. It was a stamp numbering up to uh, maybe 3,000 or 5,000 copies down here. Just example copy. Look, it's very blurry. I know. I'm sorry. I couldn't get a cleaner picture of these. But these things, again, aren't very high quality. It's a, It's like a photocopy little paper thing. But they do all right. You can still get 35, 40 bucks if you find one of these. Uh, and then copies available, 30 to 60 raw. And there's one at auction for $100. Once again, you see it's undersized. It's smaller than a regular comic. And uh, yeah, these ones are not sealed. But I think I got a sealed one coming up that we can show you that sticker that I'm talking about that kind of kept it closed. But there's Death Below, one of Jim Lee's titles uh, through Image. I'm going to stick with Jim Lee's corner of uh, the image universe because i don't know we can go all with savage dragon had some of these uh we can go all over the place i think shadow hawk had some as well we'll get to those another day but today we're looking at jim lee's little homage corner of the uh image universe here's Stormwatch number one i remember seeing this cover when it came out too getting all excited for a new series this one also red paper here one copy sold for 20 bucks back in february there's copies available for 25 25 30 dollars once again, it's an undersized little thing. Uh, the one that's sold here, I don't know if you could see it. This one is actually signed by Scott Clark, and it was only 20 bucks. But this one has that little sticker I was talking about, and it has the the, the, the dude, um, the short guy from Wildcats. Again, I can't think of his name. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can get this going. There we go. Back to the regularly scheduled program. You don't need to see all the slides. Wildcats. See, this one also has that sticker wrapped around it. See, he's got his little head there showing that it's still sealed. Number to 5,000. Uh, so this is an example without the stamp. Wildcats. This one had different shades of different colors. Uh, I guess they had different photocopy paper available when they decided to make these. So as we look at some of the prices, you'll see what I'm talking about here as they were like pink versions and pale versions and uh, even an orange version, it looks like. But... Best offers on 40 or 50 bucks. One sold for 70 that was still sealed with the sticker. Uh, and you can see that it had the number. Some of them will list the number as these were numbered up to 5,000. Uh, and then you got available copies on the other side. Some still with that sticker, like you can see on these pink ones, 70 bucks, 65 bucks, and 65 bucks for that paler version. Uh, I don't know. Some of these all still uh, sealed up and uh, collectible. A unique time uh, in comics where they sold us a lot of weird stuff back in the day. Apart from these ash cans, I remember like when X Men One had hit its milestone, seven million copies, whatever the hell it was, it sold. They made a special hologram thing that they gave out to comic shops. There were some artist proofs that they uh, shipped out for some Spawn stuff. Like they released a lot of weird and unique oddball things back in the day. Uh, not so much these days. I think Bad Idea is the only one who's kind of keeping that oddball uh, thing alive uh, with some of their little mini comics and the stickers and pins and things that they're doing. But uh, I don't know. I like all this oddball stuff. So that's why I pay attention to it because comics should be fun after all. And with that said, that's my last book for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully I taught you about a couple of things you weren't aware of or remind you about stuff you already knew of, but you forgot. And you're like, oh yeah, ash cans. I should look at those again. So once again, I'm trying to hit everybody from the new collector to that seasoned veteran, uh, that old hand at digging in comic boxes. Just want to remind everybody of some stuff to keep an eye out for when they're out there digging uh, every week. So with that all said, more content coming your way, and I will see you all later. All right, bye.